All right. Um, so I guess let's start with, you want to introduce your new member? Yeah, this is Justin Arvin, our new drummer, as of how many months now? A few months. Just a few months, actually. And what happened to your old drummer? He uh, exploded, like, on uh, Spinal Tap. <laughs> <laughs> He just really didn't like being on the road, you know, he really liked jamming and, and everything having to do with music except for the road, it's, it's kind of hard for some people to deal with, so he actually got stressed out about it and his appendix burst and he decided that that was it. I guess that's a good sign that you're, <laughs> you're stressed when you're, it bursts your appendix. Yeah, so that's why when we did the Kitty and Otep tour we came through with Fred, who was our original drummer. And um, not long after we got back off the road, which was November, December? November, yeah. We started doing drummer auditions, kind of putting call outs, and Justin was one of the first few people actually who sent us a package. Okay. Have you played, played with anyone since then, before that? Yeah, I played in a really fucking shitty band, and I don't want to fucking even give them the time of day to even fucking say their name because they don't deserve the fucking say it. hype at all. Say it. Say it. <laughs> It has to do with uh, a bunch of shenanigans and I don't even want to be associated with that shit anymore. So there you go. <laughs> Good enough. Um, right now you're on tour, the Killeth Fair tour. <laughs> yeah. Whose idea, who's the idea was the name? It was all Billy's. Was it Billy yeah. Milano? So it's M.O.D., you and Jackknife? That's right, and then local bands, different territories. Cool, how's that been going? <laughs> it's been really <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> this is all out, baby. Tell him. <laughs> I think it's the first tour where we all got along with each other. Yeah, it's that's a, for it's sure. A good tour that way. Everybody, everybody in all three bands and the crews are super really cool. cool people. Yeah. So yeah, we've been having. It's a good definitely, time. it's definitely the punk rock vibe. That's yeah. yeah, it's, it's so very it's intimate sure. and it's 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 humbling and it's fucking cool getting to know everyone. So it's it's a good tour. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, um, anything strange happened on this tour so far? Oh, or what is this? yeah, tell them the purgatory story. Or they, you probably already know that. The what? I, I don't know. Okay. We were driving from Dallas to Oklahoma City. Dallas was really hot and humid. All of Texas was. We were sweating continually. We drive to Oklahoma City. It's all gloomy and really cool looking, like kind of like out of the Ghostbusters, the way the sky was. <laughs> we arrived at this club that used to be a church. It's painted bright white with like hot pink trim. And um, we arrived there and they said, oh yeah, this used to be a church, but what happened was the, the minister there, or priest, thought he was possessed by demons, so he killed himself in the basement by hanging himself. So the place is haunted by this old priest. Which and derived the name exactly. you know, Purgatory. 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 Wonder why That's the, the name of the club. Purgatory. The name of the club is Purgatory. <laughs> exactly. And then we find out that, that there's like two massive uh, tornadoes coming our way, and they're plowing down nearby towns, <laughs> and power's going out, and the winds are like 75, 90 miles an hour, and we can see the clouds going this way and this way, we're like right in the crosshairs, and it, <laughs> we're like, wow, the hand of doom is coming down, you know? And, but they ended up kind of passing us by. I think the no, rain no, went sideways. Was massive, so yeah, the rain was going sideways. The church got hit by lightning. The that church was next. got hit yeah. by lightning. Right, right before the first band started, I think. Yes. And the kids, they weren't even affected by it. They were out in the rain just <laughs> waiting were. to get in like <laughs> 200 every other day. kids sh getting showered by rain. They yeah. stood in line, came in. It was amazing. <laughs> I, mean, I was shocked that that many kids showed up. You actually felt something upstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there was a pop. There was like a real loud pop. The lights went out for a split second, and our and our sound guy, his DVD burner, no, his CD burner got fried. <laughs> I mean, like a bunch of electronics. You said stuff. you felt some sort of scary. Oh yeah, in the basement. Yeah, yeah. In the basement? No, actually, on the second floor, they have this this balcony area, which is very, very sort of dark. And when you walk up there, you feel a presence. Like as as soon as I walked in there, I've been in a in a house when I was growing up. A buddy of mine, he had, his his parents had a mansion that they used to live in. That that one of the rooms was was definitely haunted because his grandmother had committed suicide in that room. And I walked up to to the balcony of the the Purgatory Club, and I felt the same feeling that I felt in that haunted house, which is like you feel this feeling of presence where it's like something's against your face, and when you walk in, it's like it's it's just. You can't breathe, it just sort of engulfs you. And that's the feeling I got 
the same feeling that I used to get. And the owner the said that uh, they just opened it recently, right? A few yeah, months. Yeah, it's been uh, open for a few months. And he was like spending all his time there, so he said he definitely felt. The he presence. had spent almost uh, three hundred thousand dollars, over a quarter yeah, of a million crazy. dollars on the Very club. Very cool club. There's definitely a great ambiance in there. It definitely fuels you <laughs> when you're playing. I bet. Yeah, for sure. It was. Yeah, it was pretty gothic. And then a couple days later, um, Larry ripped his shoulder muscles, our sound engineer, and I caught this horrible, like, bronchitis type of thing. So we had to go to the emergency both, both room. Both on the same day. Yeah, both on the same day. <laughs> and it was called Cape Fear Medical North Center. North Carolina. <laughs> Cape Fear, North Carolina. You went to the Cape Fear <laughs> like, Medical Center in like Cape Fear, North Carolina. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. All right, well, I guess that qualifies as weird stuff going on. on yeah, tour. man. Supernatural shit. <laughs> and you're still based out of LA, right? Well, yeah. Sort of. You know what? Sort of. Sort of. New Yorkers will never say they're based out of LA. I'm from LA. Admit it. Everyone in LA, you know, we they love admit. New York. Everyone in New York fucking hates LA. So, <laughs> that's how it is. Hey, when we first I moved wonder to LA, why. people were like, oh, you're from New York? Uh, it was like they instantly thought we were going to be assholes. Uh, or have, something. You, have you made it through any earthquakes recently? Oh, have you been out? They you just happened them? the last two weeks. Yeah. Man. They were like three of them. They even had tsunami warnings. Yep. Yeah, for, for the, the one, one off the coast. There's tsunami warnings all across the West Coast right now. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's I live right by the beach, so hopefully my apartment will not be underwater when we get back. <laughs> hey, my old family's in L.A. Screw your apartment. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, uh, and you're doing uh, your own business as well? Yeah, I started doing Karen Crisis Leatherworks a few years ago. I was doing wholesale and retail and um, hand-making everything except for what I did for Hot Topic. And when Crisis started playing out again and touring, um, it just got too busy for me to ha make, you know, handle all the hand making. I had an assistant, she went back to Brazil. So I started just making uh, enough stuff to take on tour. But it was selling out so fast that I just got a lot more of my belt buckles made. And um, now what, I've, what I'm starting to do is um, focus more on like factory made items that I can get made the way I like them so that I can keep the shop going when we're not, when we're on tour and keep selling the stuff on tour because people are constantly bugging me, you know, don't close the store down when you're on tour and want to buy things. So I started a women's t-shirt line called Extra Sister Clothing and um, it was inspired by the nickname this journalist Alex gave me, just, I, I assume because of, my stage, yeah, because of my stage performance. And um, so the first shirt, I, uh, I, I put the wings on the back of it because wings, if any Crisis fan knows that I tend to wear those on stage a lot and I actually have brought them out for this tour. So I thought that would be a cool signature for the first t-shirt. And there'll be more to follow. So. All right, cool. Are you wearing your cuffs right now? Is yeah. that Dude, check these out, man. Good yeah, these studio. are cuffs that Karen made by hand. She embroidered them by hand. She does everything by hand. So they're like one of a kind. Wow. Yeah, I got them on both my arms. <laughs> so, yeah. um, we'll get pictures of those too and the shirt so they'll come out better. Um, so is that based off the Crisis website or is that a... KarenCrisis.com. KarenCrisis.com. It'll be back up there probably around winter time. I'm going to get a lot of different things. But people have been wanting me to do a gallery and then I'll have the stuff for sale again. So. Okay. So the new video is... For Waking the Dead. And that is uh, inspired by what? Um, that's. I was reading the book 1984 again because I thought it was really fitting with the times, and uh, it just inspired me to write a song about Big Brother. Yeah, Big yeah. Brother and you know <clears throat> poverty versus. Well, we're living in Orwellian times. We're living in times of control. You know, political control that that we don't even know about. I mean, you know, conspiracy theories aside, the basic fact is that. The world is fighting for economic gain, you know, whether it's America or the East. That's what's going on. The, the, there's there's energy sources, you know, in the East. The West is fighting for them, and that's, you know, in in 1984, George Orwell would basically talked about the same thing: East Asia, <coughs> Eurasia. It was like there always had regions. to be an enemy. Yeah, there was there was. They were fictitious enemies that, and a war constantly had to be going on, and it had to be televised. Bombs dropping just to keep people in fear, and that's what we are. We're all kept in fear on a 24-hour basis so that they can control us. As long as we're scared, we can be controlled, and that's what's going on. So we're living in Orwellian times. And the song is pretty much about that because I think in this country we're really unaffected by, to recently, what the rest of the world goes through in terms of 
economic struggle and politics and and um, so and that song spoil, was kind of like you know wake up basically. wake up from this utopian artifice there's there's a lot of uh, oppression going on you know and it, it seems like it, the, the powers that be are the ones who are playing the chess game you know we're the little pieces that get knocked off the board the so okay cool all right one thing that I have to say is that something that I've never seen before we, where were we we're in Dallas. Dallas Texas Dallas Texas it blew my mind all the guys were kind of just like arced around where the pitch should be and you know the girls there it, girls many lesbians <laughs> It was a lesbian pit. Yes, they so were cool. going at it, man. and they were they were devastating, man. They were brutal. They they, yeah. they inspired the entire show, man. Yeah. I had never seen anything like yeah, it. Yeah, all the true. touring I've ever done, whatever, I have never seen a lesbian pit. You know, I've seen girls in the mosh, but these girls were like just all about you guys it, are man. All about the lesbians. <laughs> I'm all about the lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we we're all about everybody, but it was that particular show. It just seemed like there were a lot of women out well, front, and they Kat were aggressive. Yeah. A lot of her it friends, was it so. was great. It was like the sacred feminine, man. When when they were when they were going crazy, it just it Added. just really it was, cool. it, it was so great that they were physically expressing that and they were kicking each other's ass man <laughs> from the first song yeah. to the end man they were was amazing. they they put all the men to shame yeah and sure. actually billy milano after we got done he got up on stage and the girls were still there they, they were they they stuck around to see mod and he was like tipping his hat to me like you girls <laughs> kick ass show the guys how it's done and, and they did was, and they did and they did they, they were like going at it even during MOD just to show the guys how the hell to do it right man yeah, it, was awesome. they, that, it was definitely inspiring it was awesome. seeing a bunch of girls kick each other's yeah, ass yeah it's like a different we energy you could feel yeah, that power it was more really it was a more powerful energy. more powerful <laughs> it's definitely something you don't see every it's day. more powerful than seeing any pit period any regular <laughs> male pit you know yeah, guys going at it it was different you, you want to awesome. tell the, the black widow story <laughs> spiders. You don't like spiders, huh? I don't. You know, it's. I love spiders. <laughs> don't go like too far, at all. Right there. Yeah, yeah, we we oh, okay. Yeah, we right <laughs> so, so you don't like spiders? You know, it's not that I don't like them. They just fucking give me the heebie-jeebies, man. When we were we played, we were we were we were doing a couple of practices before the MOD tour, and a, a, the spider just descended upon me and I was like oh my god we had to stop and I was freaking out I, I couldn't play anymore because you know I just oh my goodness you know and, and I was pointing at the spider and everyone was like looking at the far end of the practice room I was freaking out and they're like why are you freaking out and I couldn't verbally express that there was this spider descending like, like right upon my drum set you know huge. and it was this huge black widow and Karen's approaching the spider like I was just researching these today. Oh my god! I'm, and I'm flabbergasted. I could not. I was freaking out, man. It was. It was insane. I mean, yeah. I, I'm over. I, I, it seems like I'm over exaggerating, but I'm it not was, because it was, it was a free. You could see that that red it was diamond. Huge. Oh my god! Ooh, we had like a yeah, loft over the drummers, the drum space, and um, it was. I think it was like just about the end of the song, and Justin cracked the snare, and he was like, ah, and we were like, oh wow, he's getting into it, you know, and he was like, no. Spazzing me out like, because what? the intensity of the song. And then we're like, this thing is like huge, <laughs> and it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. I then, want to tell the rest. Wait, wait, wait. wait. This is the part that everybody forgets, on. right? Because I used to play with spiders when I was a kid, so I wasn't scared, right? <laughs> so he's coming down on this web, and I have a paper cup. And I saw oh, it's cool, it's cool. I'll just I'll put him I'll put him in his cup and just put him some on top of it, right? So he goes right into the cup, boop, like all neat, right? <laughs> so all right, everybody, uh, somebody give me something to cover with. Somebody give me something to cover with. <laughs> Somebody give me some cover! And it, it like my other hand was like here, and it spun away, and it like jumped out of my hand. I was like, oh, fuck this! <laughs> They're trying to save the black widow. I was like, abolish the black widow. We didn't want to, we didn't want to kill it, but I want. You didn't want to get bitten by it either. We didn't want to get bitten by it, definitely. I'm not scared of spiders. Right on. Maybe black widows. I just want to interject that little part. Good. Good. Well, you get a picture with you.